Hi students, in today's lecture, I have come up with four small topics, uh, starting off with percentage yield, because this is kind of related to stoichiometry, like we will be using the concepts of stoichiometry and limiting reagent here. So starting off, what is percentage yield? We need to know a formula. So percentage yield of any reaction is equal to actual yield actual yield means like we have actually have done the experiment and we have got this much amount of yield let's say divided by theoretical yield theoretical yield and theoretical yield is nothing but what we were calculating using those uh, stoichiometry and limiting reagent concepts now in place of actual yield we will be basically writing what actual moles what are the uh, parameters that we will be using so actual moles upon theoretical moles or we can also write actual mass upon theoretical mass and as because it is a percentage we need to multiply it with 100. So using this formula, we will be solving the questions. Now, straight away we will understand this co concept using uh, numericals. Uh, so first numerical is initially 2 moles of each A and B are taken and 0 0.5 moles of A to B2 is formed. Okay. So here I am writing the equation 2A plus 2B is giving A2 B2. I have already balanced it. Now, we are also given with 2 moles of A and 2 moles of B. So, apparently, we also know according to the stoichiometry, 2 moles of A and 2 moles of B should react and give how many moles of A to B2? 1 mole. So, normally in the question also, 2 moles only is given. So, definitely according to the question also, 1 mole of A to B2 should be formed. But they have told that 0 0.5 moles is formed. Now we will be finding out the percentage yield of this reaction. So what formula did we write? Percentage yield is equal to actual moles. So this whatever is given in the question is the actual moles that was obtained. Divided by theoretical moles. Theoretical moles. So using uh, stoichiometry we found that out. This is our theoretical value and this is our actual value. So now into 100 will also be there as it is a percentage. So it will be 0 0.5 upon 1 into 100. That will be 50%. So the yield of this percentage yield of this particular reaction has been found to be 50%. Coming on to the next question. On heating 50 grams of CaCO3, 20 gram of residue was obtained. So when we heat CO, CO, CaCO3 first, what do we get? CaO plus CO2. So this is our solid, this is solid and this is gaseous. Now, what they are saying, 50 grams, on heating 50 grams, we are getting 20 gram of residue. Residue means this calcium oxide they are talking about because this too will go out as gas. So now 20 grams of residue was obtained. Find the percentage yield of the reaction. So this was the actual value. Actual value. We need to find what? We need to find out according to stoichiometry like theoretical value we need to find out. So we know that according to the equation 100 gram should give 56 grams of CO, 100 grams of what? Calcium carbonate, should give 56 grams of calcium oxide. You can see one mole here, one mole here and one mole of calcium carbonate means 100 grams, one mole of calcium oxide means 56 grams. So 50 grams should give how much? 56 upon 100 into 50. So it should give 28 grams. So this, uh, this is our theoretical value. Now we will simply apply the formula. Percentage yield is equal to now 
actual mass actual mass what was obtained 20 20 and divided by theoretical mass that was 28 into 100 so if we solve this what we will get 20 upon 28 into 100 that will come around 71.4 percent so this is the percentage yield of this particular reaction I hope this particular topic is clear. It's a very small topic, uh, but you need to know the stoichiometry and uh, limiting reagent concepts for solving the percentage yield questions because you need to find out the theoretical um, expected moles or mass, whatever. Now, coming on to the next topic of this lecture, that is our percentage purity. What is the now here also we will have certain one particular formula percentage purity is equal to mass of pure compound in the sample pure compound in the sample divided by total mass of impure sample impure sample of course into 100. So, whenever they will say sample, we need to understand one thing that inside that sample, sample, we have the compound also and some impurities also. Impurities also. So, if they ask percentage purity, in the numerator, we will put mass of pure compound in the sample. Suppose they can ask percentage impurity also, right? So, percentage impurity will be equal to mass of impurities in the sample upon total mass of the impure impure sample into 100. So, by using these formula, we will be solving the numericals of this particular topic. Now, the first question for this type is, read the question and try to find it out on your own because it is quite similar to percentage yield only. A 150 gram sample of copper ore contains 7, 7, uh, 75 grams of pure copper. Per, uh, find percentage impurity. Very easy. Just you have to put the formula. Percentage purity was mass of pure compound in the sample. So, this is the mass of pure compound in the sample in the copper ore. So, we will put 75 upon the total mass of the impure sample. That is nothing but 150 gram. So, 150 into 100. So, the percentage purity of the particular substance will be 50% here. This will get cancelled with 2. So, the sample is 50% pure. Now, Coming on to the next question, the percentage purity of calcium carbonate sample if 150 grams of sample gives 44 grams of CO2 on heating. Okay, so here 150 grams, 150 grams of sample is giving 44 grams of CO2. So I can say that 40 then according to the stoichiometry, I know that CaCO3 is giving CaO plus CO2. I already know that 44 grams is given by how much grams of CaCO3? 100 grams. So, percentage purity will be, so that means what? In this 150 grams of sample, the pure substance present is only 100 grams because how much of CO2 are we obtaining? 44 grams. So, percentage purity will be the pure compound that is present in the sample that is our 100 upon the mass, total mass of the impure sample that is nothing but 150 here into 100. So, we will get it as 2 upon 3 into 100 that will give us a value of 66.67 percent. So, I hope you have 
completely understood percentage yield and percentage purity. Uh, next topic is our POAC. What is POAC? What is POAC? Principle of principle of atom conservation. Atom conservation. So basically, this this particular thing is like based on the law of conservation of mass. Law of conservation of mass. So here I can say that for example, I, I can take one equation. Let's say KClO3 is giving KCl plus O2. Okay. So according to the principle of atom conservation, we need to say that like it is not like we need to say it is always like that. Uh, the atoms of potassium on the left side will be equal to the atoms of uh, potassium on the right side. Basically, the concept on which balancing is dependent on. Okay, the way we balance, that is only principle of atom conservation. So, I can say that the total number of moles of potassium should be on the left side, should be equal to the total number of moles of potassium on the right side. So, according to this POAC, we can express it. The POAC for potassium. I can express how? How many uh, number of potassium is present on the left side? 1. So, 1 into moles of KClO3. So, how many moles are present in one in the mole of KClO3? 1 is present. So, that this, this particular amount should be equal to 1 into, here also 1 because only 1 K, K is present this side also, moles of KCl. This is the P, POAC expression for potassium in this particular reaction. Now, similarly, we can do the same thing for oxygen as well. Let's see. So, moles of oxygen on the left side should be equal to moles of oxygen on the right side. So, here what we will do? The number of oxygen present in the compound, that is 3, into the moles of the compound in which it is present. This amount should be equal to the number of oxygen here. 2 into the moles of the compound that is NO2 this time. So, this should be our equal. So, this, uh, this is our PAO, POAC expression for oxygen and chlorine will be you can understand it will be the same as this. Okay, it will be same as this because both contains potassium and chlorine both on the left and right it is present like in 1 1 moles. Now, one question we will be doing based on this, this is nothing, this is very simple. We uh, studied law of conservation of mass in the first lecture that is completely based on this. So now, one question we will be solving, read the question. 27.6 grams of K2CO3 was heated by a series of reagents so as to convert all of its carbon to this compound. So, we can say that this carbon has not gone any, not gone to any other product. It has only gone here. So, I can say that this particular compound and this particular compound may, this carbon has moved. So, that means if I make the carbon conserved in these two compounds, I will get whatever the question is asking. So, they have asked the weight of the product, the weight of this product when I take 27.6 grams of K2CO3 and you can see there is a series of reagents involved but we don't need to see any reagent, anything what is forming in, uh, in between. We, will, we just know that all the carbon has moved from this compound to this compound so we will just make that conservation. So, carbon here is conserved. So, if I say K2CO3 series of reagents we have put and it has gone to K2ZN3, Fe, Cn6, whole twice. Okay. Now, 
I can say that if I if I conserve this carbon, I can say that how many carbon are there in this compound? One. So one into the moles of K two CO three should be equal to how many carbon are there here? CN six and six also that to six into twelve. Six into two is twelve. Twelve into moles of this product. I'm not writing the entire thing. This product. Now. We know this mass of K2CO3 and we know the molecular weight of this as well. So we already know moles is equal to weight upon molecular weight. So here I can write as 1 into 27.6 divided by 138 will be equal to 12 into the weight that we need to find out, weight of the product we need to find out we don't know that w by mw of the product molecular weight of the product that is given as 698 so from here we need to find w so w will be equal to what w will be equal to 27.6 into 698 upon 138 into 12 when you calculate this entire thing, you will get the answer as 11.69 grams. So, when we start with 27.6 grams of K2CO3 and we do n number of uh, reactions, we put n number of series of reagents, we don't need to know the reagents also in this case. We know that carbon is conserved means this equation we need to follow. So, this POAC is making our work easier to find out the weight of the product right so this this was all about POAC it is a very small concept so you can expect questions like this itself right our next topic is our empirical formula and molecular formula so we will be understanding this particular concept with the help of one uh, question itself but before that what exactly is empirical formula? Now, molecular formula, we already have known. Molecular formula, it expresses the actual number, the actual number of each atom in a molecule. That is our molecular formula. But when we say empirical formula, it expresses the simplest whole number ratio, ratio of atoms in a molecule. Right? So, that means, for example, molecular formula, let's say, uh, is H2O2. So, how many atoms of hydrogen is there? 2. How many atoms of uh, oxygen is there? 2. So, 2 is to 2. That is nothing but 1 is to 1. So, empirical formula will be equal to HO. So, we are representing a formula where the uh, simplest whole number ratio of the atoms are taken. One more example we will see. For example, C6H12O6. This is the molecular formula. If I take the ratio of 6 is to 12 is to 6, we will get 1 is to 2 is to 1. So I can express the empirical formula as CH2O. Okay, CH2O. Now, we need to know one thing. For example, we have a substance like C6H6, uh, that is our uh, benzene, and C2H2, that is our ethyne or acetylene right so here in both the cases the empirical formula will be ch here also it will be ch so are you saying one thing that there are two different compounds different uh, substances but they both have same empirical formula so this is possible okay so two different substances can have same empirical formula this you have to note down. Right. Now, we will understand this particular concept, how to find out the empirical formula. Um, 
and molecular formula also from that we will be understanding with the help of a question now what is the question so elements are given and their percentage composition is given to us so this particular thing is given in the question now we need to make a table like this whenever we are trying to find out the empirical formula we need to make a table like this what is this this is our atomic weight of the element atomic weight of the element for carbon what is the atomic weight 12 for hydrogen it is 1 for oxygen it is 16 now next column is we need to find percentage composition upon atomic weight we need to find this ratio so in case of carbon it will be 40.6 divided by 12 that will be around somewhere around 3.38 for hydrogen it will be 5 upon 1 that is 5 itself and for oxygen it will be 54.4 divided by 16 that will be around 3.4 so these are the values this, are, this is the val value of what let's say we are calling this as x so this is the value of x that we have got now next column is for simple ratio how to find out the simple ratio whichever is the smallest among these let's say this is uh, a this is b this is c which one is the smallest one a so all of them a b c i have to divide it with a the smallest one so here i will do a upon a we will get what 3.38 divided by 3.38 that we will get as 1 next we will do b upon a so we will get 5 upon 3.38 that will be nearly equal to 1.5 then uh, this one that is c upon a that will be 3.4 upon 3.38 this will also be almost equal to 1 now simple whole number ratio next column is our simple whole number ratio so here we can see that one of them is in fraction we can take it as 3 upon so we have to make it a whole number ratio so if i multiply this 3 upon 2 with 2 then it will become 3 but if i am multiplying this particular factor with 2 then i have to multiply this and this also with 2 okay so 1 into 2 it will give 2 3 upon 2 into 2 it will give 3 and 1 into 2 again it will give so the simplest whole number ratio of carbon we got as 2 for hydrogen we got it as 3 and for oxygen also we got it as 2 so what will be the empirical formula the empirical formula will be equal to c 2 h 3 o 2 o 2 now there is one formula molecular formula is equal to empirical formula whole n and what is this n natural number natural number it can be 1 2 3 dot 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 okay now how to find out this n how to find out this n n is nothing but molecular formula weight which is given already to us where is it given 118 grams you can see the molecular weight of the compound is 118 grams so n is equal to molecular formula weight upon empirical formula weight and what will be our empirical formula weight empirical formula weight you can easily find out from this particular formula that we have got so it will be 2 into 12 plus 3 plus 2 into 16 so calculate this how much it will be 24 plus 3 plus uh, 32 that will be 59 so we are just placing the values 118 upon 
9. That will be an exact value of 2. Now we can easily calculate the formula. So the molecular formula will be equal to empirical formula that we got around C2H3O2 whole N. And what was N value? 2. So the molecular formula that we are getting is C4H6O4. So you can again check it. Check it with the mass, molecular weight that is given here. Okay, and cross check it. So this is how we solve empirical uh, formula questions. How to find out empirical formula and molecular formula. So today's lecture we have covered uh, four small topics. Our next lecture will be completely, we will be starting with concentration terms, which is again very uh, important part of this particular chapter. I hope so far all the basic concepts are clear to you. Uh, thank you so much. See you in the next class.